We always talk about the three M's of soil, organic matter, microbiology, and minerals. Today we're going to take a look at microbiology. Let's carry out a microbiology reproduction to enhance our soils and crops, utilizing a methodology that we adore because it is extremely simple and cost-effective, the JDAM methodology that we truly love. We will see how to do it, and most importantly, we will see how to apply it and in what dosage. We see it now. I will tell you everything in this video. Let us proceed to locate one of the primary components, potatoes, potatoes that originate from our garden as we embark on this quest together. I'm planning to grab them as I have a different variety of potatoes available here that I need to take. I'm going to grab different varieties. Enhance the variety. And with the potato unpeeled, uncut, untouched, just like that, we are going to boil it for a few minutes, depending on the quantity of potato, depending on various factors. I do not know. Maybe approximately 20 minutes until the potato is extremely soft. So soft you could even mash it into a creamy texture that melts in your mouth. The tenderness of the potato will be unparalleled, making it a perfect base for any dish requiring a smooth and velvety consistency. And this will be another one. Here we already have the boiled potatoes. We have turned off the heat and as you can see they are extremely soft and ready to be used for the preparation. Here we have one of the potatoes that have already been boiled, which we can mash and put all of them inside a bag that is slightly waterproof, similar to a bag for clothes, made of thread or cotton. This bag will help keep the mashed potatoes fresh and prevent any leakage. It's a convenient way to store and transport the mashed potatoes, especially for picnics or outdoor gatherings. Ultimately, our main goal is basically to create a brew-like concoction. To achieve this, we will proceed by placing the bag in this specific location as it is the designated area where we will carry out the process of mixing the ingredients together to form the desired mixture. This is a drum with a capacity of 200 liters. It can be made larger or smaller. An important aspect is that it must be filled with rainwater or well water that does not contain chlorine, because if we add chlorine to it, we will not be able to support the growth of microorganisms, as this is obvious since the chlorine will kill them. Therefore, it is crucial to avoid using chlorine in order to preserve the microorganism population in the drum. So we place the water in this container, approximately 200 liters in this particular situation. We are going to place the potato in here and we are going to add the inoculum to allow it to infuse in order to facilitate the reproduction of the microbiology and promote the growth of microorganisms. Furthermore, another component, apart from water and potato, that is utilized is seawater which adds a unique flavor. Ocean nearby, we have it. If not, you can also use sea salt. Let's go to the ocean, grab some water and pour six liters of seawater here into these 200 liters of rainwater or well water that we have here. Here we dump the seawater. At this very moment, right here in front of us, we have the potato, a starchy vegetable that is commonly consumed and used in various culinary preparations. Let's tie her up. Actually, we stick the potato in here. Even a sock, because we do not have any concern at all. Esparza is situated in this vicinity, covering all aspects of the product that we are going to later insert into a machine in order to apply it effectively and efficiently. We are not concerned if there is a plethora of items floating around in this vicinity. We place the potato in this particular location, right here, precisely on top of the surface, as instructed. And even what we do here is grab it a little with our hands, carefully ensuring a firm grip, and quickly distribute the potato to each designated location, making sure it is efficiently handled and promptly delivered, maximizing productivity and minimizing any potential delays or mishaps that may occur during the process. This way indoors. We possess the energy here for the microorganisms. And now we are going to obtain the inoculum, which is the location where the microorganisms we are going to reproduce are situated. And here there are plenty of options. From a good soil that you can have in your field, from a forest, from the ditches of a road, any place where you see good soil that smells good 
and that you can sense there are microorganisms. We are fortunate to have this particular kind of plant in our fields. The plant is widely recognized, and in Tiskla, they have a multitude of names for it. And in this patch, traditionally the grandparents, the great-grandparents, used to say that the soil in the patch is the best for planting things in the garden, even for fertilizing. So we are already aware that there is a significant amount of good, really good microbiology occurring here. And we are going to place it in there, similar to how we do with the potato, inside a bag for infusion, let's say like a laundry bag where the juice can come out. And it solely depends on putting us through the experience. Descend to this location and procure a small amount of dirt by reaching down and grabbing it with your hand. The superficial part and grab this soil from here that smells amazing and you can already see that there is a great amount of life present in this area. We utilize approximately 200, 300 grams, 400 grams of material to make a total of 200 liters of liquid in this process. In truth, with these methods, we often overlook the dosage of these products, which can have serious implications and should not be taken lightly. And it is evident that you can observe that there are a few tiny white objects that are mushrooms. There are countless mushrooms in this area. We are fascinated as there is a wealth of life. Our goal is to bring this vibrant life into our fields. Okay, we have successfully filled the bag and we will now proceed to put it into the infusion container. Well, here we possess the inoculum, the forest soil, derived from any specific plant of your choosing. Let's tightly close it like a potato, ensuring that the liquid doesn't spill out of the container and cause any mess or waste. And we have dampened it slightly already. We've just initiated the water supply. The process of adding moisture to it has only just commenced. At times when you turn, microorganisms come alive. We placed it here, similar to how it is placed in the cane. This is completely inclusive, allowing us to touch it. We could even consume from this location if we desired, without any intention of causing harm to ourselves. And ultimately, we will implement a cap to restrict it. But this is not a reproduction in the style of Unovia, so basically we just put a cap on top. There's no need to do it properly. What we're interested in only in this case is that it does not touch direct sunlight, so it does not damage the microbiology that remains on top a little bit. And we will leave it at that. We will be keeping an eye on this more or less with temperatures around 20 degrees. It should take about two, three days to work, to reproduce, to be ready for application, but we'll keep an eye on it during these days. Let us observe the functioning of the microorganisms and see how they are working. Perfect in only 24 hours. Take a look at the multitude of foam bubbles present in this area, spread out in every direction. This is microbiology operating at its full potential. In one more day, two more days, this is completely prepared and ready for immediate application. Check it out. This is another concoction and we are consistently making concoctions. It is the same process. Here we have utilized bags, plastic sacks, the ones we have from the seeds. Additionally, to demonstrate that it works the same with this type of bags, the important thing is for the water to move from the inside out. We remind you that inside is where the potato and the inoculum are, forest soil in this particular case, and we observe how it is working. But this appears to be really good. Let us take a look at how things are going. Understood. Proceeding accordingly. Perfect. Here you can observe all of the bubbles and a multitude of additional things that are worth mentioning and should be taken into consideration. Perfect. He successfully achieved the desired breathing. The microorganisms have become active and tomorrow we are going to create the application as planned. We have the option to do it now. However, it might be better to wait until morning and then proceed with the crop application. This will ensure optimal conditions for the task at hand. Let's make the most of this opportunity and plan accordingly for a successful outcome. Let's utilize the JDAM method. And as we always mention, there are multiple approaches to applying this product. However, one crucial aspect I wanted to demonstrate is that it is acceptable to place it in any machine, in any implement, and utilize a filter like this or similar. This is because we directly inform the machine and the machine's own pump extracts the product from within this container. 
because there might always be some potato chunk, organic matter, forest dirt, or something that could cause trouble in the machine. A method of application is spraying, which can be observed on the crops, specifically on the leaves of the crops. An alternative approach to apply it is through the utilization of soil-applied herbicide machines. Furthermore, another method of application is by injecting it directly into the ground and the roots in closer proximity to the roots themselves. One possibility is through the use of irrigation, but it is necessary to have a reliable filter. Another alternative, as we will observe at this moment, is through an invention that we have developed here in our own home, located in Camphor. In this location, we are currently working on irrigating dryland vineyards and also incorporating microbiology into the process. Simple invention. But we can do three things at once, now we see it. This year the vineyards need water, and when we are in dry farming, the truth is that we suffer quite a bit with these conditions. We have devised an invention to irrigate the vineyard utilizing a subsoiler and a boot positioned behind it, containing 800 liters of water. We inject water into the soil while simultaneously loosening it in close proximity to the roots of the small plants, specifically the small vines. In this specific case, we have added the Yadam microorganism preparation, which amounts to roughly 20 liters of preparation, to the mixture at a rate of about 20 liters of preparation per 800 liters of boot ensuring an ideal concentration of microorganisms for the intended result. We'll make about three boots on this surface. More or less we're hitting the mark, in this case injecting 50 or 60 liters of product per hectare into the ground. And we do two things. Three, we unpack water and directly provide the microbiology to the plant's root zone. And with this subsoiler, we can observe that there is nearly no evidence of our actions because following the subsoiler leg, there is a wheel positioned at the back that ensures the entire area is left completely level. Yes, it's true that in this section, the ground moves a little and the cover is slightly disturbed. However, it's worth noting that we're using a narrow-legged subsoiler, so we're not plowing or turning over the soil. We also have other videos where we discuss this subsoiler and its application in vineyards and other crops. This is a well-designed narrow-legged subsoiler that prevents overturning, taking inspiration from the Joman model. Here we see the leg. Just take a tube behind, this one here, through which it releases the water 20 30 centimeters, depending on the depth that we mark. With a tube that comes down from the tank to the pump, and it was a tank that we used for irrigation. Now it is no longer utilized to terminate things, it is employed to generate life in this apparatus. And we continue moving forward with both feet and carrying out this watering process. Very simple and on time contributing. We already have the microorganisms ready and we're going to apply them. How are we going to do it? We utilize the fact that we are performing a treatment in this instance on the olive trees, but a treatment that excludes fungicides, copper or sulfur, as it would result in the destruction of microorganisms. We are applying bacillus for the price of the olive tree. Consequently, it is compatible with the microorganisms in the yard. Therefore, the primary objective of our work here is to carefully acquire the microorganisms and subsequently transfer them into the designated compartment of the boot, ensuring utmost precision and accuracy throughout the entire process of collection and containment. It is a piece of cake. We are applying at a rate of 20. 25 liters of this product per hectare of olive trees or vineyards or fruit trees or whichever crop we are applying it to. This application rate ensures effective coverage and optimal results for the crops. It's super easy, it's super fast, and above all, it's super affordable. And here we are in the olive grove, 
applying bacillus for the price and microorganisms. The reproduction we have done with Yadam, using a normal treatment boot and working at a pressure not exceeding 10. This ensures that the microorganisms are not killed. Our job is quick and practical, as we wet the trees to introduce good microbiology, or good guys, and also wet the ground to provide microbiology that helps us improve our soils. This process is crucial for enhancing the health of the trees and promoting a favorable environment for their growth. Our aim is to achieve optimal results by utilizing the power of beneficial microorganisms. So this system is extremely easy, incredibly fast, remarkably cheap, and it is one of the finest solutions we have discovered to effectively aid in enhancing soil microbiology and promote optimal soil health. You've seen it already, it's really easy to do microbiology, reproduce microbiology, and apply microbiology to the soil and crops. I suggest that you pay close attention to this aspect which has been greatly overlooked in agronomy studies for a considerable number of years. And currently we are observing that it is one of the fundamental elements of a vibrant soil, a fertile soil, a productive soil. I strongly suggest that you pay careful attention to this aspect, and if you desire, I can provide you with a selection of books, a small amount of bibliography, and even some laboratories where you can conduct your initial microbiology analysis. If you are interested, please click on the link provided below and I will send you an email containing all of this information.